Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. And the gremlins are, are at work again. <laughs> we're trying to get our guest on the line, and uh, he knows we're calling him, I hope, but he's, we keep getting an answering machine. So Don is going to keep trying, and whenever he gets him, if he gets him during the next hour, he will go ahead and put him through. Uh, our guest, though, is Arun Gandhi, you know, the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, and I would like to talk to him tonight because he's the keynote at our upcoming transformation conference. But first, this is live tonight. This is July the 6th. 6th? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> this whole day has been so messed up. July the 6th. Yeah, so a week from today is the 13th, and that's when the conference starts. So, yes, today is the 6th. <laughs> 2012. Okay, and Julie I don't know, said like maybe a different year. <laughs> <laughs> a while ago, she said she just found out she thinks Mercury is retrograde. Yeah, and you know what happens when Mercury goes retrograde? Everything gets mixed up. It's not just the gremlins; it's the stars. It's, communi- it's communications, and that's what my whole day has been about. And so, and that could be this is one more incidence of it. You know, it's like. You know. Yeah. Well, it's not only the gremlins, it's the stars and the planets got to get into work, too, to align everything. Maybe it'll be out by the time we do our conference anyway. No, we were warned <coughs> uh, after we set the date. We finally set it. Someone emailed, and they said, are you sure you want to do it then? Mercury's in retrograde then. And it was like we, we couldn't move it anymore. We had moved it. It had been We had been working with the date for so long, and by that point it was set in stone, and there had been so much that we went through to get where we were, and I thought, well, maybe it'll be different if we know going in that it's Mercury retrograde. We're forewarned, and we know, you know, that I've forgotten about it. And then, so all this stuff started happening. I thought something's going on, and then someone sent an email today saying something about Mercury retrograde. And it's like, yeah, I feel this one. <laughs> well, then you got 2012 on top of yeah. it, and all the planets doing oh. their crazy stuff. So it's no wonder there's something going on here. Right. <laughs> But if anyone wants to call in, I'll give out the toll-free number. It's 1-888-627-6008. 888-627-6008. And I know Mr. Gandhi did acknowledge, you know, we have the show tonight, but he's an hour ahead because he's in New York, and something could have come up. But he's going to keep, they're going to keep trying, and if they get him, they will just interrupt the show. Right. Last week we had that, too, wasn't it? Wayne Peterson, we were having time we getting had him. We difficulty, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we had to, he had to come in whenever he, we started it, and then they came in. Yeah, so it seems like, uh, I don't know what is going on. Well, so well, this, is, <clears throat> this is us winging it. We're winging this tonight. Okay. And so if you hear flapping in the background, that's our wing going crazy. <laughs> so. Okay. But Mr. Gandhi is the keynote speaker, and you know we are. Uh, the last couple of months, I have been featuring the speakers and our authors that we're going to have at our upcoming conference. This is the seventh transformation conference, and it's next weekend from July 13th to the 15th in Rogers, Arkansas. And boy, now the Boy, the people are really signing up. It's like the last two weeks before the event. They just Mm -hmm. pour in. Right. So we're going to have a really good showing, and we've got a lot of vendors, too. Mm -hmm. I have one vendor spot left. We've been having um, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of psychics. We're going to have readings. We're going to have all kinds of things. Jewelry, crystals, aura photography, um, Soma Energetics, which is uh, something new, and then uh, books and... Um, angel, lots of angel things. Um, one reader is going to give a little angel bag with every reading she does. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so really cool things. Yeah. And then we've got all of these speakers, and I've been featuring them for the last two months on here as we come down to the wire. And um, we usually have a real good crowd, and I think it's going to be the same this year. Well, Mr. Gandhi, though, is he's the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, and he is the only member of the Gandhi family that is still carrying on his grandfather's work. 
And we published his book called The Forgotten Woman. That was the story of the woman behind Gandhi, which was Gandhi's wife. And it was a story that had never been told about her involvement with this great man. But Mr. Gandhi, uh, of course, he was one of the grandsons, and he grew up, or started out at the ashram they had in South Africa. But he'll be explaining it all, if we can get him on here, that he was a rebellious teenager caught in Africa when he wasn't black and he wasn't white. He felt like he didn't belong anywhere, and he had a lot of problems. And finally, his family shipped him off to India to live with his grandfather, the Mahatma Gandhi. And he said that was the best thing that ever happened to him. Besides straightening him out, it gave him time to spend with his grandfather to get to know him and to really know his principles and everything. And so he was there, I think, up until the time he died, whenever Gandhi was assassinated. But he is the only one now that is doing, carrying on his grandfather's work. And he has had the uh, Gandhi Foundation for Nonviolence well, the whole time I have known him. I have met him oh, about 20 years ago. <clears throat> we were uh, both speaking at an ARE conference in Virginia Beach at the headquarters. Of course, he was the keynote. He was the really important person. And I kept thinking, oh, if I just get a chance to even meet this man. But it was later he came up to me and he said he heard that I was a publisher and he had this book that he had written about his grandmother and he couldn't get anybody to look at it. They all told him, well, now if it's about your grandfather, we'll look at it. But nobody cares about her. So he wanted to know if I would look at it. And I said, well, I didn't even know if it was the kind of book we would publish, but I thought, well, yeah, send it to me and we'll see what happens. And when I got it, it was an excellent book. It just needed some um, corrections and additions here and there, plus a change of title. <laughs> but I remember at the end of the book, uh, he didn't tell about the grandfather's death. He went into a lot about when they was younger, a grand, you know, Gandhi's uh, childhood, and whenever he met uh, his wife, and they were just children together, and they were betrothed at a very young age, so they kind of grew up together after they got married, and told a lot of stories in there that have never been known about Gandhi. Um, Arun. When he was going to do it, he went to all these places trying to talk to everyone who remembered his grandfather to get information. And, of course, they always wanted to talk about him, and he wanted information about her. So he began to get bits and pieces. And then at the ashram where he was, he was born and he grew up, uh, Arun, he went there and he found boxes of letters. That were they were going back and forth between his grandfather and grandmother and uh -huh. his uh, their, his father, that had never been published, and so he had all these letters and all this uh, history and information. So that's what he put together to make this book, and I think thought it was a fascinating book because there was lots of missing pieces that people had never known about Gandhi and his wife. Especially that whenever Gandhi was in prison one time, his wife took over and um, was doing the speaking and carrying on the grandfather's work until he got out of prison. So there were a lot of things that were never told. And she died when they were in prison together uh, toward the end of everything was beginning to come down for Gandhi at that time. But anyway, at the end of the book, he just ended it without really talking about the assassination. And I told him, you've got to put that in there. He said, why? Everybody knows about it. I said, they don't really. We've got these younger generation coming up, and a lot of these people don't really know what happened to Gandhi, of course, unless they watch the movie. But um, about him being, when he was just shot, point blank at this meeting. 
And they wanted him to have uh, protection and have people around him to help, but he kept saying, no, if it's God's will that I'll be go that way, then I'll go that way. Mm. So he didn't want bodyguards or anything. So this man just walked up to him point blank and shot him. But the stop part I liked about it was interesting was whenever Gandhi was dying, he looked up at the man and he blessed him. So he had no ill feelings against the man at all. So I said, you got to put it in there. So Arun added that part to the end of the book. And so I thought it made it an excellent book. And it's been out now about 20 years. Mm -hmm. It was in the 90s when we published it. Somewhere in there. That would be, yeah. It was one of the earlier ones. It's probably really close to 20 years. Uh, Thereabouts, Mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's called The Forgotten Woman because nobody knew about her part in all of this. So we've gotten to be really good friends with Mr. Gandhi, and uh, he's a really amazing, fantastic man. And he's still going and he's still lecturing all over the world. He usually spends a lot of time, I may be repeating a lot of things that he'll repeat if we can get him on here. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he spends a lot of time at universities and high schools speaking to the young people. I know that he has spoke to football stadiums full of young people at colleges. Mm -hmm. To him, he said that's the most important thing is to reach the young people because they are the leaders of tomorrow. We wanted him to come to the conference last year in 2011 And he said he would, but then he got an offer to come to Africa. I don't remember what country. Do you? No, I don't remember the country. I think it was in the northern part. In the northern part, they wanted him to speak at a huge conference for the young people. It was called the the Leaders of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we asked if he could go to that and back out on our agreement. Of course, we said yes, because to us, that was more important him to follow his dream, his work that he's been involved with all of this time. Mm -hmm. So he told us, well, he would do it the next year. So now he's agreed to come to our conference this year. But he goes all over the world. He's traveling, I think, more than I am, if that's possible. (laughs) You guys are neck and neck, huh? Yeah, we're both traveling a lot. (laughs) But he's traveling a minute. Got to get a drink. He's traveling all over the world, speaking to people about nonviolence, and even into areas where there's wars going on. And I said, into the communist countries. And so that takes an awful lot of, um, what do you want to say, perseverance, confidence to go into an area where the violence is happening mm-hmm. right now. Right. But that's really following in his grandfather's work. So, because Gandhi he, he was never afraid. Practicing what he preaches. <laughs> so. Yeah, Gandhi was never afraid, so his grandson is the same way. But he said he thought that was where they needed it the most, to go in there where the people were in the middle of violence. Mm-hmm. Right. So I greatly admire this man. He is he's a very fantastic person. And he will be at our conference. He'll speak next Saturday, which is the 14th. Right. Yeah. He's the keynote speaker on Saturday. (laughs) But another thing that if he comes on, I really want to talk about, in addition to the Gandhi Foundation for Nonviolence, he has started a new organization. And I think, Julia, you know more about that, don't you? I just know it's the Gandhi uh, Foundation for Children, where he's educating children. (laughs) And working with children. Starting with the young ones, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It probably has to do with, you know, I, I don't know um, <clears throat> all the ins and outs of it, but I do know that it's like probably where you say he's spending, he does so much work with the children and he, he's speaking to them in school, so it's probably been working, with, well, that's where that's been coming in. So I think now he's focusing with this organization on the younger ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called Gandhi for Children. Yeah, and we'll be doing, um, we'll, we'll announce it more during the conference, but we'll be doing some fundraising for that. We'll, do, we'll 
raffle, things like that, and all the money raised will go to that foundation. <clears throat> For his new foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess we're going to be talking about some other things, too. But um, this is the last live show we're going to have until October. So when you hear listen to it from now on, it's going to be brought out of the archives. I'm sorry, people, but it's t I've been home now for a few months. It's time for us to hit the road again. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for the archives because everything is in there. The only thing is people can't call in live on those shows. But uh, we're going back to Europe, and we're leaving right after our conference. Within a week, I think it is. But there's no more time for any shows mm -hmm. here. So we'll be going first to England, and I'll be giving a lecture at a conference they're having in Glastonbury. That's the end of July. Then we're starting in on a whole series of classes all over Europe. Classes and lectures. Mm -hmm. And lectures mm -hmm. combined in all of these countries. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, our classes now are five days instead of three. And with the translation, it does take longer, and it's more tedious to get it correct with the translators. But we will be going first to Warsaw, Poland, our first time to be in Poland. And we're giving a lecture and a class there. Then we will go directly to Helsinki, Finland. And I think we give a lecture. Yeah, every one of them, you do a lecture. The and then day a I get in. <laughs> right. So there's no time to... Uh, Relax. I better enjoy these last few days I got because when the conference starts from there on until October, it's just back to back. So we're not going to have a whole lot of downtime anyway. But um, we'll go to Helsinki, Finland, and then from Finland we'll go to Munich, Germany, and have a class there and a lecture. Then we go back to England. It After, could be. I'm, I know well, we do a lot back and forth. I've so. been trying to keep track of it. We go back to England. Uh, I think that's about the time we're going to do our conference in London. Right. It'd be the very end of August, the 1st of September. Yes. The 30th, I think it is. The very last day. The last day in yeah, August. So August is 31, and then the 1st and 2nd of September. Okay. The end of, last day of August and the... First and second of September, we're having our first transformation conference in London, mm -hmm. and we are bringing Mr. Gandhi over for that too. Yeah. So we're going to be having a lot of involvement with him in the next few months. We're bringing him over there so he can do the talk, be our keynote at the London mm -hmm. conference, and he'll be still promoting his children's foundation right. there. Right. Okay. <clears throat> So um, we're going to have a lot going on there. And then I have a class in England. Mm -hmm. And then we go to Rome after that. Well, there's more things in there. There's You're more jumping things. over some things. <laughs> I know there's more things in England. We've right. got a lot going on in England before mm -hmm. we head uh, down to Rome. Yeah, there's a couple of classes in there. And, um, I think there's a couple of, yeah, there's, there's several things that we're doing. Then we then in Rome we're going Check to be out the website. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hard to keep all this in your head when we got this conference coming up. That's taking the mm -hmm. the main thing right now. Right. Taking all my brain. But we're going to Rome and we'll be having a class there. And in all of these places we'll be working with translators, which always makes it more tedious and takes longer because you have the back and forth a translation. Mm -hmm. uh, we was in China, they were thinking about having simultaneous translation, but we haven't been able to work that out yet. No, I found a company that has some equipment, but it's going to take us a while to maneuver into that. You know, So it's, it's, it's a little complicated to do it, but I have found some things. So it might be something we'll be doing soon. So we'll be doing that in Rome. Then, as soon as that class is over, guess what? We get a little bit of rest. We'll leave, and this is October by that time. We'll leave on an 11-day cruise of the Mediterranean from Rome. We're going all over the Mediterranean. 
Now, if anybody wants to know any more information about any of these things, best to check on our website, right. isn't it? Yeah. Of any of the classes in uh, Europe and the conference in um, London right. and the cruise. Right. All the things are on your website, DoloresCannon.com. Mm -hmm. Some of them are on the Ozark website, but all of them are on yours. So that's the best place to go is DoloresCannon.com. Okay, but we'll be going on the cruise, and we'll be hitting places. We're going to go to Naples and to, um, I know we're going to Athens and Greece, and we'll be at the Parthenon. We're going to, where is it, in Turkey? Ephesus. Ephesus, where they said they it's supposed to be Mary, Mother Mary's house is supposed to be there. Uh, we're going several places. I don't even remember all of them, mm -hmm. but it's Turkey, Greece. Italy, uh, what's the one off of Greece? Sicily. Mm -hmm. Sicily. We were going to put Tur uh, Egypt on this trip mm -hmm. when we first planning it, but that didn't work out. Julia was over there last year in Egypt, and when she was there, she was trying to work all this out. But Egypt has been having too many, much turmoil there, and... Um, yeah, the Problems. cruise lines, if the cruise lines wouldn't do a trip, include it. It was really was going, hard to get one in, yes. Yeah. That's what I was going to mm -hmm. say. Because of all of the government problems and the turmoil, the cruise lines weren't going to go to Egypt. So they're missing out on a lot of tourist activity. Right. They were hurting when I was there. And then, it, I mean, that, how long has that been now? Last um, year. It was last fall. So that's a good six, oh, that's almost a year, probably nine months ago. So now they're, I know they're feeling this because they were feeling it then. It was really hard. So. You said right after you come back is when all of the the uproar started. When it really, it, it started up again. Yeah, I mean, it had been going, and then everything, it's, you know, and no tourism. It was just starting to come back in when I was there. And then right after I left, that's when the last big thing happened. And that's not really, it, it's still working on getting better, so. They're still trying to calm down mm -hmm. because they got a new president now. So the cruise lines anyway are not going to go in there. So we're not going to Egypt on this trip anyway. Who knows? We will never know what we're going to do yeah. next anyhow. Yeah. But we will do the 11-day cruise, get back to Rome, then we'll be back here the middle of October. Of course, we're only here for a couple of weeks, but at least... Then we'll be having live shows at that time mm -hmm. when we get back here. <clears throat> you see, there was something else I was going to say about that. Oh, we did something was our first this last week. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I did an, a lecture clear on the other side of the world from you, home. You bilocated. <laughs> But through the miracles of technology, it's amazing. I've done a couple of uh, level two classes. They were small, right. and we did those by Skype. And that was amazing because it was like we were in the same room with mm -hmm. everybody. Right. But this is the first time I ever did a lecture, and it was uh, the group was in Norwich mm -hmm. in England. I've been to Norwich, but this was a group that were having – they have uh, lectures. They have monthly get-togethers. They have monthly, um, yeah, get-togethers where they have guest speakers. And you can, from what we could tell on Skype, it looks like maybe about 50 people. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's the first time to do it. And whenever they first started talking about me starting to do lectures by Skype, you know, and I thought, I don't know. It's hard enough to do radio shows without seeing your audience and, you know, talking to the wall. That's why I have Julia here. I'm not talking to the wall. I'm talking to her anyway. But I said, I can't possibly give a lecture for two hours without seeing the people. You've got to see the people and see the reaction And in order to do it. I could do it, but it wouldn't be much fun. <laughs> it's like I said, talking to the wall. Right. So I said, I'll do it if I can see the people. So it's all worked out now. And we could see the audience. And they said they had me up on a screen that they were looking at. Right. The computer was turned, the camera was turned, we facing the audience so you could see them. 
and then they had you projected up on a screen so that they could see you, and everything was fine. Yeah. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. amazing. Oh, the little pixel fairy got in there a couple of times. <laughs> They're not as bad as the gremlins, I don't think. At least the gremlins sometimes knock the things off the air. Mm-hmm. But this little pixel fairy sometimes get the pixels on the screen mixed up a little bit. But we could still see pretty good. They could see me, and we could hear each other fine. We got to the questions and answers. That went just fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where we could uh, we could answer them. So I said, that was a first. The idea of this is to make it to where I won't have to be traveling all over the world all the time. I can do lectures from here. And tell them your idea you were thinking of in the future where we're going to have maybe split screen. Well, that'll be for the class. That'll be for the level two class. Um, But the lectures, uh, it's all, yeah, this is all moving forward so that we can get you to more parts of the world that... Than, than you're physically able to do. I mean, nobody can. It's, this is hard. This is demanding, the, the trips and all this traveling. And so this is a way to get you, because we have so many demands, so many requests for. So many for, countries. Absolutely. And so this is a way. I mean, we have the YouTube. We have these things out there where they can watch videos. But this is a way that maybe we can start doing live things to other places. And so we'll just we'll just start exploring. I mean, that's what that's what this is all about. We're just trying to evolve with everything and and stay up and and I mean it's a wonderful way to where you know you didn't have to leave. You were talking on the other uh, in another country and you were right here. You know, yeah. and that's very cool. Inside so, the world. Mhm. And and we'll just keep looking at uh, if the, how that we can do that. So you know, uh, it's it, I know they'd rather have you in person. But that's not always physically possible. And then this is easier for them as well. They can just go someplace local, you know, who are sets it up, and then there you are. So, yep. But the idea of the maybe doing the class in multiple countries at one right. time. Right. Now, that's the level two class. Uh, I, I don't, I mean, that we may step up doing the other one that way. But right now, that's just a thought. Um, and probably as we get to it, technology will be zooming to catch up with our thoughts. Um, but the thought is, because there are small classes, is to maybe, um, at, at, because of the way they're set up right now, uh, maybe have them in different countries simultaneously. So it would be a split screen on your your screen, what you're watching. Each one of those countries has a class going on, but then it's feeding into your screen. So you might have three or four classes happening at once mm. in different countries. You know, we'd have to keep it to, to a similar time zone so that, you know, that because that's going to be a factor. But anyway, I mean, it's it's like, let's think outside the box and what can we do? I mean, you know, nothing's impossible and it's just a matter of technology. So Well, nowadays open. nothing is impossible because the way technology is just mm-hmm. racing ahead. Right. And we just, we think and we have an idea that the technology is probably not too far behind us to make it happen. So. Mm-hmm. By the time we get there, we can do it. I mean, we'll start with two, and then by the time we're ready for three, they'll probably have the technology. They may have it already. I don't know. I'm sh- I know they can do two. Two so, different two locations. Screens. Yeah. In fact, I think they can do more than that, but you just have to sign on for a special program. No problem. We can do that. Mm. So, see, it's just things like that. It's a matter <laughs> of just knowing about it and doing it. So, and if we can think it up, then I know somebody else has thought it up. You've already figured and, it out. Exactly. <laughs> so. Well, there was something on CNN just in the last few months that they said is already invented. Now, I don't know who's using it yet, but it's where you'll be able to project a hologram mm-hmm. into the computer, and you will actually appear in that room with the people, and they'll see you as a physical person. Talk about Star Trek (laughs) and Star Wars, how they had the holograms on there. Science fiction is finally catching up to reality. But they said the uh, projection of you would be in the room and you'd be able to walk around among the people and talk to them. The only thing, they wouldn't be able to touch you. But um, I wonder how it would be from our end. 
It, I bet it's similar. I'm thinking, I think something probably is photographing you. It's probably like uh, like having a camera on you. So you're just doing your thing. And you probably want it to where, like you had the other day, where you're able to see the audience so you can see them and, and, and that way you're getting their reactions and you're responding to them. So it's probably just like that, but a camera. See, here we had a web camera. It may be just a it may be just a different kind of camera that captures you and then just projects over there. So. But how would it be for me? Would I be able to be in the room and looking around at the people? I don't I don't think so. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. I think you would just be where you are and you're you're able to see them on a screen like you were saying. But I don't know. That's just my no. thought. My because that's what thing. they said. You would actually be projected as a hologram. They've known about holograms for a long time, but it's mostly been science fiction. Right. And that you'd be able to really interact with them, just they couldn't touch you. Put your pan right through you, <laughs> like a ghost. And that's why I love doing that. Ooh, I went through Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know anymore. The way things are happening, uh, anything is possible. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we're definitely keeping up with all of this because... This is the wave of the future. Right. This is the new world. <laughs> oh, and everything is changing so fast that right. it is hard to keep up with it. Well, that's what they, they've said so many times is just keep your roller skates on. you just got to roll with it. You can't try to, to to stay where you are and be rigid or anything like that. You will, you will get... You will get plowed over <laughs> so fast. <laughs> a lot of the older people just think even the computers are too complicated for them, but... Uh, they may have a hard time catching up with the new stuff, but we're, we've been going along with it all along. You just you have to. You just got to roll with it. Um, I mean, you can do it other ways, but you're going you're going to get plowed over, and I mean, you're going to have to be very limited in what you can do. So, well, I was lucky, I guess, because my husband was so involved in electronics. He loved electronics. Does so she tearing them apart? putting them back together. Sometimes he didn't put them back together, and they were all over the place. But he'd been doing that for so many years, all his life. So when the first computers came out in the 1980s, we had one of the first ones. So I watched it develop from those little baby steps. You remember the old dot matrix printers, and the first computer I got Oh, my gosh, I was scared of that thing because I'd type in it and then I'd hit save and I didn't know if it was going to save it or if it was going to eat it. And sometimes it would. It would just disappear and my words and my books were floating around out in limbo somewhere. That's when I never quite trusted the computer. So every time, even now, when I do a chapter, I put it on hard copy. I put it on paper because I don't know what the computer is going to do with it. So we have been around from all of these advancements. I know if my husband was alive now, he'd be in heaven. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, we know about things that we don't know about, because he was always knowing about everything. He was always ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, these things that we're wondering, if it's out there, he would know, he'd already have it. (laughs) Yeah, because he always always was at the beginning of all of this, Mm -hmm. and he knew how to fix them and how to, program them, so he would have just loved these times. Absolutely, yeah. Shoot, we, he may be one of them that's helping it all come through. And from the other it. side. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. But anyway, well, one of my uh, clients just last week brought something in. You probably are familiar with it, but that's the first time I heard of it. What What is it? It's iPad. iPad, but it's the latest thing out. Well, well, somebody else said, see, iPad is an Apple product. They said any Apple product does this. Well, so. you know um, how our books now are on e-books, and she was showing me how it's on the e-book. People, I see people on the planes and we're reading these, but she said you push this button and it will read it to you. Now, that was something I hadn't heard about. And, of course, it is a computer-type voice, which will probably improve over time. Right. But it was reading it to you. Now, that was one of the things people kept asking us, can you get the books on CDs where we can put them into the car and listen right. to audio them? Right, audio books. Yeah, audio books. 
We tried that two well, 20 years ago. Well, that was when you ago. tried it, and then that was going to be my next project because a lot of people are asking for it now, so it's like it's time is now. So that's one of my next projects was going to be. But then now it's like, well, if, there, if there's already something out there that will do it, I don't know if we want to look down that road. Um, It'd be an really, awful lot of work. It is a lot of work, um, although somebody's just approached me about doing it, so we'll just have to see. Well, even Helen Reddy had said, mm-hmm. you know... She wanted to be the voice. Australia, voice. she uh-huh. wanted to read my books uh-huh. into uh, CDs, audiobooks. But way back 20 years ago, we put our one of our first books on the cassette tape recorders, but it didn't go like we thought it would. I, so I don't think the time was right. So we just dropped it. But now they keep saying we want audio books. But, yeah, it's an awful lot of work. You've got to sit there and read the whole book. But when I saw this, I said, wow, that's going to take a lot of work off our shoulders. We won't have to do this with all the books we have out there. If you just push a button and it will yeah, read it to it. you. Yeah, right. Because it was always books for the blind were done right. that way. Now they'll have an advantage, too. Right. And that's probably why this was done. So that way it, it works for everybody. Uh, because they had an organization that would turn the books into books for the blind. But I said that's really, that shows how far everything is going, how fast everything is advancing. That's what we don't know what's going to happen next. But we're at the forefront of it, and we're really trying to keep ahead of everything. Oh, I'm, we're not as front as we could be, but we're working on it. We're doing our best. Um, there's just so much happening so fast. It's we're, we're trying. We're doing our best. I'm I'm paddling as fast as I can. <laughs> keep us up. Flapping your wings as I'm fast. I'm flapping those wings. I, as I'm I'm like the duck. You know, it's just all smooth on the top of the water, but you look under the water and it's paddling like crazy. You know, and that's that's me. I'm <laughs> just I'm doing the best I can. So, but yeah, you know, just a, a year or so, the computers are out of date. Everything is moving so fast. Uh, for, for a while, I think about it. We've been trying for oh, since we were in Hawaii. After Hawaii, but we got back. I'm trying to get back from China. We've been trying to mention. That one student of ours, Margarita. Yeah, very good. And also there's a question that somebody wanted um, addressed on the radio show, too, and I said it's going to have to be after we finish with all the interviews. So let's do both of those. So, okay, uh-huh. but I want to tell you about Margarita. She is one of the bravest people that I had ever met. She had so much courage and so much determination, and it was quite a story. Oh. Uh, when we met her, we met her at one of our classes, right. and she was paralyzed from the waist down. And she was in a wheelchair. Beautiful girl. And we got to know her there. After she took the class, then she decided to come to my office in Arkansas, and we had a session with her. We did what we could. I don't even remember what the what what the session was about. But when she was paralyzed, it was in Italy, I think it was. We have all the facts down somewhere. Somebody out there probably remembers more than I do. But she was in Italy with her boyfriend, and he was riding on a motorcycle out in the middle of nowhere. And um, oh, she well, they were having. She was breaking up with him at the time. I guess it's all right to mention these things. I don't know, but she was breaking up with him, and they were arguing. Anyway, they ended up with the wreck of the in the motorcycle. She was thrown off the motorcycle, and that's how she became paralyzed. And they were in the middle of nowhere. They had to try to get some help, medical help, to get her to a hospital way out in some little town, and really in the middle of nowhere. But she ended up being paralyzed, and she came back to the States. She had a lot of therapy, but she was in this wheelchair. And she lived alone, took care of herself. That's what I found amazing. Uh, uh, it was amazing what what she did. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't know she had anything wrong with her. She just and and that gentleman in Hawaii was the same way. I mean, they they just go. The other one in yeah. the wheelchair mm-hmm. went in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just go. Nothing stops them. Uh, I I just so admire that. I don't know that I could do that. I just I'm not in that position, and I don't. You know, hopefully I don't choose that reality for myself, but um, 
that I just don't know. I, I just don't know that I could do that. There's so and she her attitude was just so phenomenal. But and, when she was came for the session in my office, she was very down, very depressed, and she didn't want to be here anymore. And she was undergoing a lot of stress because it was difficult. And she was living by herself. She didn't have anyone. But then she said after the session, she changed. She uh-huh. began to her spirits began to come up. Right. And that's when we saw her just recently was after that. Um, If she came to level two, Mm -hmm. uh, was that when we were in Hawaii or L.A.? It was in in L.A. this this year. Yeah, in February. She Mm -hmm. came to the level two, and she was really Oh, she said her life completely turned around. She She was now doing seminars, and she was teaching people, and she was... You know, just wonderful, you know. Just and a, she was doing the hypnosis mm-hmm, that absolutely. we taught her and right. having wonderful results. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we saw a little video that someone sent us showing that she was having therapy and beginning to make her legs move again. Well, she was showing me how, how what was happening. The feeling was coming yeah, back. absolutely, a feeling, and she was able to start moving her feet. She said that, you know, hadn't happened before, and it was all, it was starting, it was starting to happen. It was coming yeah. back. Mm-hmm. But uh, and she was her, she was so happy, she was helping people, and then it was like you know the bombshell burst. We heard the news. We couldn't believe it. Right. It was right after, wasn't it? A week or so after? No, it wasn't that soon. But it was. Uh, it was right before. So well, maybe it was. It was in March because it was right when I went to England. It was when I I just got gotten back, over there and I found out yeah. back from February. Yeah, from so I the, guess it was just a few within a few weeks after that. Tell them what we heard happen. Well, someone that was with her, a very good friend of hers, wrote us and just, uh, it was within, I think, a couple of hours uh, by the timing of it and everything, and he just wanted to let us know that she had drowned. Um, and that's all we knew. She'd been in an accident and she drowned in Florida. And um, We said, what? In yeah, I just, I kept going, no. I don't. At first I thought it was someone playing a, a very mean joke. And so I kept, I was asking a lot of questions and wanted verification. And then I wanted to make sure it was her, you know. So there's a lot of things I, I had to do to because it was just so startling. And, and here um, she's on her way back mm-hmm. after all of this struggle. Right, and apparently, um, well, then he wrote back and he said, yeah, he was there and he saw her hovering over the bed when they were, uh, just as they were declaring, um, calling it. And, and she, she was, had died. Yeah. When she had died, and she was, and she looked at him. It's like she had a choice whether to stay or to go, and she chose to go. I mean, he saw her make the choice to go, so um, it was just probably enough, you know. But but then we got a, we saw a letter from her, and we got back that somehow, and this is weird how things like that happen. Uh, they'll fall through the cracks. That you're not, you don't see them until it's time to see them. She had written to us, I think, was before, well, before the level two class, and. She was talking about some of the trials that she was having with uh, the hospitalizations, and apparently she had died. She was not died, but she was having a lot, like, like she was almost dying several times, you know. Yeah, I think she so, said she had had several times she could have gone. Exactly, and she kept choosing to come back, so this time she chose not to. So. Well, uh, she did a lot of good. Absolutely. Made anyway, a big we, difference for the mm-hmm. short time she was mm-hmm. alive. Oh, she's just a I can't wonderful, remember what she person. said, but there was a couple of times she in there. She had infections and things like that. Oh, yeah, she was in the hospital right. with that. Right. But it was like all along she was given a choice, even with the accident. Mm-hmm. Do you want to get out or do you want to stay? But in her short life, she made a big difference in mm-hmm. people's lives, mm-hmm. especially there to, at those last... Well, I know she touched my months. heart. Oh, she, oh she's just a oh, magnificent person. And uh, we didn't know about it. But then we did get emails, people saying from the classes and stuff, why didn't we acknowledge that she had died? And I said, well, we just found out. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, everybody grieves in their own way. Right. And we acknowledged what a wonderful person she was. But that's interesting that he saw her in the spirit form make a decision. Yeah. He made the decision. <clears throat> to go or to stay. So, to me, that's what I want to honor. This was her decision. It always is, but the fact that he saw it, and so we know this is what she chose. So, it was no accident. It was, okay, Here's here. I'm going to leave now. It's done. 
Mm-hmm. She could have stayed. It would have been more of the same. Maybe she could have got more of her mobility back. Mm-hmm. But maybe she saw it as too much of a struggle and oh, she'd done what she was supposed to do. I would say she's done what she's supposed to do, <laughs> what she came here to do, and she can do more on the other side. Is, yeah, you know. This time right now, you know, we're in, people are choosing to stay or to leave because of the changing of the vibrations. Do they want to stay and go on, or do they want to go to the other side and just watch from over there? And help. See, not, they're not just watching, they're helping from the other side. Mm-hmm. To and give so their much. energy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, As um, the world does go through this shifting and everything. But we wanted to say something about that, and we forgot about it. No, we didn't forget. We started up with all these the other interviews, and so we, there wasn't really... a an opportunity to, so this, yeah. this presented itself. We just found out about it before we started doing the interviews with the speakers. Okay. You said there was a question. Right, and it actually parlays into what you were saying there at the very end. This one gentleman, and he did call in on one of those shows that we were doing uh, before, and he was asking uh, about the all the waves, and he's wondering if, if you could address the depression. Uh, there, there's a lot of depression that they're feeling and stuff. I was wondering if you would be able to address that as to what that's from and maybe kind of what it's about and everything. Well, as far as I can figure out, it's part of the symptoms that people are experiencing. Because I said it started in 2003, but now it's increasing. Mm-hmm. And the body is exhibiting physical symptoms as we adapt to the different frequencies and vibrations. As we're moving into this new earth, right. now, depression is real. Right. I had it about a month ago, and I couldn't figure out where it comes from because I, I'm not that kind of a person that gets depressed. i got too many other things <laughs> going on. But I was, uh, it came like a wave, and it was just so strong, I wanted to start crying. And I said, what's wrong? Where's that coming from? That might be what he's thinking, mm-hmm. but it was gone by the next day. So it may be this. I know this is one of the symptoms, right? But maybe it hangs on for a few days from some people. Maybe it would help if they realize it is part of the adjusting. I think most anything going. I mean, anything you have right now, and depression is one of those. It is. But just look at it. It's an ascension symptom. There's so many things. It's just oddball stuff that happens. And it does help to say this is an ascension symptom. Yeah. Um, another thing is it's just very, because everything, like you said, it's not that it's speeding up any, I mean, it is speeding up, but what it's doing now, rather than just going on this path, it's stacking. And so that's why we're just feeling, oh, you know, because it's so much happening. It's One isn't, it used to be one got over, you got to have a little time to kind of relax. We're not getting that anymore. They're just bam, bam, bam. And so, well, some of the other symptoms for those of you who haven't read the book or haven't heard me say it, I've said it so many times, is high blood pressure, heart palpitations where the heart begins to beat irregularly, depression, dizziness, those are two big ones, joint aches and pains, and ringing in the ears. Was there any more? Nausea, but I think that has to go with the dizziness, probably. Probably. But they don't happen all at once, so don't expect them to do that. When they happen, you might get one symptom or two symptoms, and it'll last for just a couple of days at the most, and then it goes away. Then maybe another few days later or a week later, you might get one of the other symptoms. But just be aware that's all it is, is your body adjusting as we're going to go through this ascension process. And um, I know people go to the doctor, and they said the doctors can't find anything wrong with them. One of my classes, I had a doctor, it was a lecture I gave. I don't remember where it was now. It's been recently. She came up to me afterwards, and she was just smiling, and she said, now I know what's wrong with my patients, that I haven't been able to figure it out. That's what it is. It's just the shifting of the vibrations and the frequencies. Yeah, but how does she tell her patients that? <laughs> yeah, how are you going to tell them that? And uh, they don't teach that in medical school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she said it sure explains it when she can't find any reason for it. Right. But it made her feel better mm-hmm. that now I know that it's not me as a doctor anyway. But in one of my last uh, clients, they came through because... 
they I know we had a big shift, a big jump the first of June, and then there was another one about the middle of June that I felt these were dizziness, mm. and it was really strong and so when one of my clients they they you know the ones I work with began coming through, and they said, "You've got to get used to this and expect it because it's going to keep increasing." And it'll be happening more often. Hmm. And we said, where did we hear that before? Anyway, I was about to say something like that before you said that, because they were like, people, I think, it's like these happen, and then they expect it'll calm down and go back to normal. And what they said is, no, you have to, it's that roller skating thing. Again, you've got to roll with it. You've got to learn new normals all the time. You're never going to go back to what it used to be. It's never going to be that way. That's that stacking thing. It's going to keep happening like I said, more often, more frequently, and more intensely. So you're going to get a little bit, and it's just going to be right back on you. So there is no more of this, you're like, oh, I, I can't wait till it relaxes and I can get back to normal. It won't. It's not going. Because, see, it's pushing. It's got to raise, 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 and push. And that you can't do that if you keep going back to this let down stage. So. Well, I always say the best thing to just, Hang on and enjoy the ride. Well, absolutely. Well, and something else that's very important, and like in that last two days, I got very, very tired. Where before that, I had actually had an, an increase in energy, and it was really felt good to be that that high on energy. But these last two, it's like I could almost, I could barely crawl home. It was just that tired. And then I remember they're always saying, because you may get tired when, with these things. If you get tired, go ahead and sleep. Go ahead and rest. Go lay down. Whatever. It's okay. If it's in the middle of the day, okay. You know, it's just your, you, this is you trying to catch up with everything. And adjust. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I don't know what was the, some movie that Betty Davis said. She said, fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> well, and I think if we just, like I, they're always saying, telling me to say, is just breathe and drink lots of water. <laughs> you know, it's just, you breathe through it. You know, it's going to be fine. It's not. You know, if you if you tense up, just like if you tense up in a car accident, if you tense up in anything, it makes it worse. You're going to it's it's really not going to change what happens, but you're going to come out with more bumps and bruises because you tensed up. You're going to be sore because you tensed up. Just relax and ride it through. As I found on the planes when they start having turbulence, if you'll just relax, it's not near as scary as when you tense up. It's bumpier when you tense up. So it's the same kind of a thing. Just breathe. You just breathe through it and just think happy thoughts. <laughs> you know? Well, they're always so, telling my clients, breathe. Uh-huh. We want you to breathe. Yes. And water is extremely Very important. Very important. And they're also saying, I'll tell your clients, too, about the joy, about finding the joy. Yes, they see, say that. See, I think that. that's keeping yourself lighter when you do that. So that helps keep all this in a different place. If you're tense and oh, scared, well, you're, that's the kind of energy that you've got around you that you've got to bust through. And if you're so. all the stress when you're working and trying to meet deadlines and all of this stuff, yeah, they keep saying, bring joy into your life. It's like stop and smell the roses. Get out with nature if you can because Oh, this this it is something everyone's well, going right. through. And what they're saying right now, it's too short. Time is too short. You've got to do what you enjoy. So, oh boy, well they're coming through loud. People, this must be a last message here. <laughs> yeah, we're about time to sign off. There's a lot of people out there trying to decide what to do, trying to decide. They're they're clinging over here and they don't know whether you know, okay, should I go do this that I really want to do? And they're holding on. There maybe it's one person. I don't know. They're saying go for it. You've got to have the joy. You've got there's, the time's too short. You will see that you there is a safety net. You've just got to go ahead and take that step and walk out there and take that chance. And trust. And trust. And you will see that you are taken care of. But there's a lot of people who are just scared to death to make that step. And so they're saying do it. You, you've got to let go. And that's part of what makes this bumpy ride is because you're holding on. You've got to let go. Skate through it. But take time to bring joy into your life and be happy. The other just causes stress and makes mm-hmm. you sick. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think we're coming up to yeah. the time we're going to have to go off. I don't know what happened to Mr. Gandhi. I hope he's okay. I hope he just forgot, you know, right. anyway. Mm-hmm. Probably what happened. Because he's a very busy man, too. 
But anybody who wants any more information about the conference next weekend or about all the events in Europe can go to our website, and you think it's best if they just type in mine. Yeah, DoloresCannon.com. So That's easier than the company. It has all the different ones. Now, the conference is on OzarkMT.com, but there is a link from your site over to it. So that okay. may be the best. That, that one has all of your events on it, and then it will get over there for the conference. Okay, but it's here in Rogers, Arkansas, next weekend, the, the 13th to the 15th. And we're going to have a lot of wonderful speakers. And I know you're going to learn a lot if you come. Okay, so anyway, I won't be live until October. We've got a lot of adventures during that time. So everybody be safe and healthy. And like we said, just go with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just go with it and, and trust. Everything's going to be fine. So thanks for tuning in tonight. Good night, everyone. Make a great one. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.